risen. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this Easter Sunday. Today we celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death through resurrection. We rejoice in the good news that though Jesus died, God raised him to life. Today we hear the angel's words. Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. How do we receive this message? Are we living in fear? Are we heavy with grief? Are we looking for Jesus? Community Mennonite Church is a peace church where everyone is welcome. We are living generously in the name of Jesus. Most of us live in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County, Virginia, but some of us are scattered and all of us are practicing social distancing as an act of love for our neighbors. So we welcome everyone to this celebration wherever you are. Like the women at the tomb on that first Easter morning, we have received a message and putting it into practice each and every day is how we've met the living Christ. Hear these words of love, hope, and peace from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. Let these words call us to worship. At that time, says the Lord, all the families of Israel shall recognize me as the Lord. They shall act like my people. I will care for them as I did those who escaped from Egypt, to whom I showed my mercies in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. For long ago, the Lord had said to Israel, I have loved you, O my people, with an everlasting love. With loving kindness, I have drawn you to myself. I will rebuild your nation, O Israel. You will again be happy and dance merrily with the timbrels. Again, you will plant your vineyards upon the mountains of Samaria and eat from your own gardens there. The day shall come when the watchmen on the hills of Ephraim will come out and say, Arise, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. Let's pray. Almighty God, in your loving kindness toward all of us and all you have made, renew our suffering world through the power of resurrection so that we may enjoy the life you intend for your creation. Amen. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. Christus ist wahrhaftig auferstanden. The good news today is from Matthew 28, 1 to 10. The resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. 
there they will see me. I'm Lori Yoder, and I help teach the third and fourth grade Sunday school class. So I want to give a big shout out today to Sabine, Aaron, Mona, Mela, Alex, Graham, both Silas's, Felix, and Jonah. Hey, everyone. One of the things that we like doing in our Sunday school class is playing a game called Pictionary. And this is where one of us draws a picture uh, based on the Bible story, and everyone else has to guess what that picture is referring to. So I wonder if you'd like to play that today. Uh, let's all take a look at some of these pictures shared by folks in our Sunday school class and also a little help from uh, my daughters, Mira, Jill, and Anna. So here's our first picture. Can you tell what this is? And I'll give you a couple hints. I'll give you something to choose from. So is this Dawn? Is this midnight or is this feet? Well, hopefully you can see that it's dawn. The sun is rising. And so that's when our story takes place, is right when the sun is rising. Here's the next one. 
What's this? Is it a violent earthquake, an angel of the Lord, or a turtle? It's a violent earthquake. Do you see how it looks like the earth is shaking and opening up? That's what happened when the sun rose on the day of our story. How about this one? You see what the arrow is pointing to there? Is this an angel of the Lord? Is this the guard? Or is it a big bird? It is the angel of the Lord. This angel uh, came when the earthquake happened. Now, right beside the angel, do you see that round circle? That is the tomb. That is where they put Jesus's body after he died. Here we have two people who were looking at the angel and looking at the tomb. Which, which one would you say is correct here? Is this Mary and Mary being filled with joy? Mary and Mary were surprised and afraid? Or Mary and Mary had a little lamb? Well, when I look at their faces, I think they look like they are surprised and afraid. I think that angel was really surprising and really scary. And that's how they felt when they saw it. Here's Mary and Mary again, and now they're hearing what the angel says. Now, can you tell what's happening in this speech bubble here? It says, don't be afraid. Go to Galilee to see Jesus or find some Easter eggs. Well, it turns out the angel told them, don't be afraid. Okay, even though it seemed a little bit surprising, the angel said, don't be afraid. Okay, what is this one? Is it, don't be afraid, come and see, or time for bed? Well, do you see the person over there with those binoculars to help them see? This is come and see. This is what the angel said. The angel said, remember how Jesus's body used to be here? Come and see, because he's not there anymore. And Mary and Mary went and they looked and they saw Jesus's body wasn't there. How about this one? Is this filled with fear, filled with joy, or filled with lemonade? Okay, maybe it looks like lemonade, but there's not lemonade in our story. Mary and Mary were filled with joy. They realized when they saw that empty tomb that Jesus really was alive. And that made them really happy because he was their good friend. Okay, what's happening here? Is it Mary and Mary ran to tell the disciples? Mary and Mary waited patiently. Or Mary and Mary went to sleep. This is running. Mary and Mary were so filled with joy. They were so excited that they had to go and tell the rest of Jesus's friends that he was alive. Okay, try this one. Is this go to Galilee to see Jesus? Don't be afraid or the end. This one is go to Galilee. So the message for all of Jesus's friends was to go to Galilee, see him, because now he is alive. I wonder what it was like for Mary and Mary to have their fear changed into joy. It was because of Jesus. You know, I think that Jesus knows that we all have fear. And we all have joy. And this story helps us know that Jesus can help us to not be afraid and that we can be excited to share that joy with other people. So how did you do in the Pictionary game? Did you get them all right? This is a fun game that you can also play at your house. Um, if you have paper and pencil, play with your whole family. Or if you are doing Zoom meetings with friends or family, you could even try doing this online. 
So until we meet again, bye everyone. Alleluia. Let's rejoice anyway. Because even though we are still at home, still anticipating the peak of coronavirus, still engulfed by the tangle of oppressions that threaten our planet, our country, our church, our community, still perhaps uncertain about our theology, our ethics, our own souls. We are resurrection people. Christ is the power of life over death. And on the days we can't fully live this truth, may we release ourselves into the mercy of our God revealed in Jesus, who lived among ordinary people for whom faith is not easy. So let's rejoice. Even if we're not yet finished with the tears or trials of this life, let's sing Alleluia anyway. A lot of folks are gardening these days, and that's good. Gardens connect us with the soil, water, sun, and seed. Various plantings reveal something about those spiritual virtues like perseverance, the rhubarb that bounces back after being mowed down, or beauty, the opening of the dogwood blossoms, or strength, the vine that will overpower whatever trellis you have devised. And of course, weeds, fruitfulness, composting debris that feeds new life, all these have something to teach us about the spiritual life. I know for myself, no matter my mood, I'm always cheered this time of year by asparagus, wild spears from the ditch, or those cultivated in the garden. A number of years ago, perhaps fending off a midlife spiritual hazard, I decided that I didn't want the doubt and skepticism planted in my life to yield a garden of indifference to the gospel. I decided I would plant a little more faith than seemed practical. I'm not hoeing out every last doubt. I'm just overplanting the way professional gardeners do, anticipating some gardening trials, some unexpected weather, some pests, some neglect, some disease. I decided I would ask God for what was on my heart, even knowing that my heart is sometimes cold as stone sometimes inaccessible, sometimes set on something less than what God gives. So hoping to enjoy a lifelong garden of faithfulness, come what may, I pray anyway, believe anyway, trust Jesus anyway, sing Alleluia anyway. Aren't we confident that God can tend real human beings under any condition? One report of that first Easter morning is in the Gospel of Matthew. Faith wasn't easier in the first century than it is today. According to Matthew, there were but two persons, two Marys, <laughs> whose faith or friendship made it as far as resurrection morning. Two Marys, one earthquake, one angel, and one message that changes the world. I admit that the message at times has been distorted, and the messengers throughout history have been as flawed as you and I. Yet this sacred message has taken hold in diverse settings across geography and history and culture and reached us for this very time and place. We need a living faith personally and as a church. Our world needs resurrection, our world needs resurrection people. One of the unique features of this resurrection report in Matthew is the reference to the guards at the tomb. It seems one of our ancestors in faith, the one who put together this brilliant gospel, wanted us to know how utterly ineffective were the imperial soldiers. They became like dead men. Apparently, the message of Jesus' resurrection 
is too much truth for an imperial an empire built on deception and lies. Jesus' death and resurrection is a personal and public proclamation. God will not let the sin of empire or sin in any form determine our future. And it's not that God underestimates the power of sin. From Genesis through Revelation, it's clear that sin is pervasive. It affects us all. There are a lot of ways to describe sin, but I think it's helpful in these times to describe sin as estrangement from human wholeness with creation and estrangement from divine love. That might be a way I'll begin rereading the Bible. Where do we see estrangement? Where do we see blossoming relationship and restored wholeness? Sin or estrangement is everywhere. The families in Genesis turn against each other. Cain kills Abel. Jacob cheats Esau. Joseph humiliates his brothers and they sell him into slavery. Our confession of faith in the Mennonite church says that through human sin, we see powers of domination, division, and destruction unleashed on humanity and in all creation. Even when the Hebrew people are liberated from slavery by a God who speaks in a burning bush, opens the way through the waters, and inscribes a law of love on stone tablets, the people drift into sin as if they have no familiarity with this God. And so the Bible story evolves. God frees, saves, forgives, restores, and sends people again and again toward the wholeness and love for which we're meant. In the New Testament, the whole story of Jesus, especially his death and resurrection, is an echo of Israel's experience with God. What is new? What makes this good news and not just a recapitulation of past events is that Jesus is God's Messiah. God's anointed son, not a stranger, but a brother to humanity, who is fully human and fully divine. Jesus shows us God's love and wholeness, even when we've become estranged through our own sin or the systems of sin that influence us all the time. Through Jesus, we experience the freeing, saving, forgiving, and empowering love of God. Throughout the 40 days of Lent 2020, our congregation has used the phrase, show us, asking Jesus to show us who he is in scripture, yes, and in our community today. We also ask God to show us who we are as a church. On Ash Wednesday and the first two Sundays of Lent, we gathered for worship at 70 South High Street. We had no idea how we would be tested during the remainder of these 40 days. What I noticed this Easter is God's faithfulness in showing us the Christ-like lives that heal, befriend, make peace, and seek justice, even in the midst of pandemic, when it is not easy to do so. Enough of the gospel has taken root among community Mennonite church that we know there is something deeper and truer for our lives than the materialism, competition, racism, and domination that pretends to be powerful. This pandemic is creating inconvenience and frustration for some of us, serious financial hardship for others, and loss there's also here a prophetic wake-up call, like that resurrection morning earthquake. God is overcoming the false powers through Jesus' resurrection and his resurrection people. So let's receive the angel's message and live it each day in the resurrection power of God that Jesus shows us. 
this world-changing, life-saving reality of resurrection can seem too big for our little lives. And so Jesus makes it simple, brings it home, as it were, in a meal. Even at a distance, we share this meal in Jesus' name today. If you have bread and juice or something else to eat and drink, we're going to share these elements together, sharing the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in our own bodies. There will be some music and, and time for you to get something to share. Let's receive this good news. Jesus said, this is my body. I was born in obscurity, but had a holy fire within me like a prophet. I was baptized in the Jordan. I confronted demons, the corruption of God's law, and enmity between peoples. This is my body. I was faithful to the law and the prophets. I accepted the Spirit's commission for my life healed those who were sick in body and spirit, and lived in peace. This is my body, my eyes of compassion, my listening ears, my belly, sharing the distress of a nation overcome by powers beyond themselves, my back bearing the cross of suffering, sin, and shame. This is my body, I walked from the shore of Galilee through villages and countryside, gathering people, teaching, feeding, challenging, and blessing friends who could carry this message in their bodies, in their lives. This is my body, and it is for you. This is my blood. I came from Miriam and Mary, from Joshua and Joseph. My people were Jewish and worshiped the God of all peoples, nations, and languages, the God who cannot be seen but is known in mystery. This is my blood. I remained steadfast against temptation, refusing to compromise my identity, even when Satan himself tried to seduce me. This is my blood. I suffered with the poor, living and ministering within a brutal empire, yet cherishing the beauty of the landscape, the sea, the fields, the flowers, the mountains the children. This is my blood. I came by covenant, God's promise to free, save, forgive, restore, and send. I came as love. This is my blood, and it is for you. Friends, Lent is a season of giving, praying, and fasting. Now it is Easter. Now we feast. Jesus said, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Today we feast with the risen Lord Jesus. He is raised by the God who spoke creation into being and speaks with the power of resurrection life today. His body and blood become the meal of resurrection life for all who believe. Faith is not easy, though it is sometimes simple. Join with me in this prayer of faith and then we'll eat and drink together as we listen to the music Catherine has prepared. Let us pray. Gracious God, today as the church, we are grateful for Jesus' body and blood, for his covenant faithfulness to you and to us, 
for his resurrection life for the world. We confess our sin and accept your forgiveness with the fear and great joy of the two Marys whose worship inspires our own on this resurrection morning. Send now your Holy Spirit so that freed from the fear of death and sin, we may bless the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Show us who you are today as we eat and drink together. Show us who we are as your church. Let this meal be a true communion with you and all the saints, a great thanksgiving for your immeasurable love, a simple sign that we pledge ourselves to you, and a remembrance of your love in Christ. Amen.
is risen indeed. to the tomb as the first day of the week was dawning. The Gospel writer describes their fear and the joy and relief they experienced. We too are caught between our own fear and the joy and affirmation of resurrected life known anew this Easter. It is good to recognize ourselves as part of the history of people struggling between fear of what is and has been and a desire to affirm an open and unknown future. This Easter, we want new life to be offered and experienced by people all around the world. We pray for nurses, doctors, and healthcare workers who are caring so much for many ill and concerned people. And we want hope to be known and embraced by people all around the world. Lord, you bring about par powerful reversals in the world and in our lives. This Easter, we claim your victory over death. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Lift your glad voices in triumph on high, for Jesus hath risen and we shall not die. Vain were the terrors that gathered around him and short the dominion of death in the grave. He burst from the fetters of darkness that bound him, resplendent in glory to live and to save. Loud was the chorus of angels on high, the Savior hath risen. To God in full anthems of joy, the being he gave us death cannot destroy. Sad were the life we may part with tomorrow, if tears were our birthright and death were our end. But Jesus hath cheered the dark valley of sorrow and made us immortal to heaven. And now may the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with the power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. Go in peace. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.